been a tough week. Hey guys, it's Tyler Rollinson and welcome back to Let's Talk Charlton. Today we're going to be talking about Saturday's match against Bury, the transfer talks that have been floating around, and updates on the takeover. Let's do this. Charlton secured their first back-to-back -back victory since October in a 1-0 win over Bury last Saturday. So going into last weekend's game, Bury had lost six on the spin and had gone seven games without scoring a goal and were glued to the bottom of League One, 12 points from safety, which is an absolutely atrocious record, while Charlton were closing in on the playoff spot following a 1-0 win over Oldham, but it was their first win in nine. Overall, I felt that Charlton were the much better side in that game. Berry did have a very good chance in the first half when the ball was crossed into the box and they missed to the right. It looked like Ben Amos was powerless to save it as well. Um, but after that point, it was all Charlton. Um, actually, Berry nearly scored an own goal that was reminiscent of Leon Best's own goal against Blackburn, except they just hit the right side of the post, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, but then after that, Mark Marshall got off the mark and he nicked his first League One goal in a Charlton shirt. Fantastic work by Joe Aribo to pull it back and Marshall's not going to miss from there, is he? And Stevie Mavadidi had a very good chance late in the game when he ran from the halfway line Ran to the six-yard box nearly, cut inside, through the defence, had a shot. Keeper saved it onto the post. Very unlucky by Mavadidi. But Charlton overall were the better side, and I felt that we much deserved the three points. So after the game, Charlton are back in the playoff spots, albeit sixth and five points behind Bradford. But we're starting to close the gap as results went our way last weekend. As Scunthorpe drew with Portsmouth, Bradford lost to Northampton, Rotherham drew and Oxford lost to Walsall. So Charlton are, well, got very lucky this week and were able to retain a playoff spot, which is where I think that we need to be at this stage in the season. And Bury remain glued to the bottom of the table and I can see them in a relegation battle this season. I'm very happy that Charlton nicked the 1-0 result, but I have noticed one problem that we have. We haven't been scoring. It's pretty obvious, guys. It's literally just been a known fact. We've been scoring one goal a game very recently. I remember at the start of the season where we were finding it quite easy to tear apart defences on the counter-attack. For example, in performances like Northampton and Fleetwood where we were scoring like three goals a game. And we were in a pretty... Uh, doing very well at that point in the season. But I do think the form will pick up. We just need players to come back from our injury crisis. So going into this weekend's game against Walsall, the Saddlers were going through a pretty rough patch themselves until this weekend where they beat Oxford 2-1, um, which helped Charlton out a lot in retaining our playoff place. But I do have a lot of confidence going into this game because we have three vital players returning. Pierce, Solly and Tariq Fosu are returning from injury and are set to be in the starting eleven for the game. Pierce and Solly have mainly been commanding forces in the defence this year. Despite Solly being injury prone, he has still been there for us in the defence. And Pierce, same thing for him. He's been a stallion in the defence uh, throughout this season until he got injured. And Tariq Fosu, we've missed him for the past two months. Still top goal scorer, which amazes me. And we need him, man. His skill, his pace. He's got it all, and I think he's going to help us out a lot in our promotion charge. I do think that we're going to beat Walsall. We just have to not underestimate them in any way and just come out all guns blazing and get the result that we need. I will be attending Walsall, so stay tuned this Saturday for a vlog. So as I'm sure everyone is aware... Earlier this morning, it was confirmed that Ricky Holmes was on the verge of signing for championship side Sheffield United on a fee worth £400,000. <sighs> he will be missed. He will be missed. As simple as that. Um, he is among one of my favourite players, or was among one of my favourite players, but yeah, um, that's a real kick in the teeth for our promotion charge, it, it really is. So initially I thought that Holmes would remain with Charlton <laughs> until the end of the season and then probably leave at the end of the year, depending on our league position, but let's be honest, we all saw this coming. With us not being able to sign anyone and with Robinson powerless to keep him, 
Robbins, it was evident that Holmes was going to leave. But the one thing that did actually annoy me was at first Robinson wanted a swap deal to bring in ex-Milton Keynes Don centre midfielder and current Sheffield United player Samir Carruthers. Initially, I was a bit... I wasn't too keen on Carruthers signing for Charlton, mainly because he was another player that played for MK Dons when Robinson was managing them. And I'm going to be honest with you, some people may disagree with me, but I don't think Ben Reeves has really adapted to the shape. Maybe he has in recent games due to the recent long-term injury of Billy Clark, but I felt with the start of the season, he wasn't picking up, and I still don't think he is. So I didn't think Reeves adapted after signing from MK Dunn, so I thought that Carruthers was a bit of a dodgy deal. However, it was still a player and still a person that was replacing Ricky Holmes until De Chatelet decided to come in and say that he's going to try and make as much money as he can before selling Charlton. What a bellend. To be honest, when I read that article about Ricky Holmes confirming him leaving, my initial reaction was... Kids, would you step outside for a second? <laughs> Dear Lord, that's the loudest profanity I've ever heard. But looking back, I can kind of see why he left. Obviously, Charlton weren't in the position that we all wanted to be. We are now, after our recent wins against Oldham and Berry. But, admittedly, Holmes wasn't necessarily doing bits for us in the pre few previous games. But, I respect him massively. Um, I wish him all the best in the future. I just only wish that he could have stayed with us longer. But, we're in trouble. We are in serious trouble, but... Good luck, Ricky, in the probably the next three or four years of your career. Um, but yeah, good luck to you. For fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs>What do you guys think about all of this transfer nonsense and us losing players, key players, and us not being able to sign anyone? Let me know what you think about this, because to be completely honest, I am absolutely fuming. On the bright side of the matter, there was a rumour speculating that this could be the week that Charlton are going to be sold by De Chatelet and are getting new owners. Now, if these rumours turn out to be true, Charlton can finally make a late transfer charge and Robinson can bring in the players that he wants, as long as they're not MK Don's players. He has got a point, though. I am quite intrigued as to who the players are that Robinson wants to sign. Apparently, we were interested in Kiefer Moore until he went to Barnsley, and we were interested in this Gleason guy, I think his name is, who played for Birmingham. Uh, but he's gone as well. We are still interested, apparently, in Brett Pittman from Portsmouth. I don't know if he's going to want to move. But I think he was a target. But I'm I'm very interested as to who we're trying to sign. Who do you think is most likely to sign for Charlton this transfer window? If the takeover happens, leave, leave me, let me know in the comments. And will Charlton be sold this week? Let me know what you think about that as well. Right, so that is it for today's instalment of Let's Talk Charlton. The next video you'll see on this channel is Eva confirming the takeover. So I'll do a little analysis based on the person who has bought us. Or if that doesn't come out, it will be the vlog against Walsall. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that. This has been Tyler Ronaldson. Have a nice day and I will see you all later. See you later, guys.